So I am here to talk to you guys about medical marijuana. Um, I'm going to talk about what makes up medical marijuana, what it treats, the effects it has on the body, and what it could possibly do to our, pa our patients that actually need this medication. Uh, medical marijuana can help with medical conditions and can be administered to patients that need help with side effects due to treatments such as cancer treatments that make them nauseous, um, not wanting to eat. Um, it can help with seizure activity as well. A lot of uh, children that we see have um, uncontrolled seizures. It has shown that if we give them medical marijuana, whether it be a pill form, a topical, or an oil that simply just goes in under the tongue has helped tremendously with these patients. And um, I think it's something that we need to open up to and explore more and help our patients become 100% or as close to 100% better as they can be. Um, there are two main ingredients in mar med marijuana that a lot of people don't understand. They get they get really confused. Both have different effects on the body, as I said, and can be separately used to target certain illnesses. Um, marijuana is a plant, first off. If people don't know, medical marijuana is a plant. Um, they have a hundred different chemicals, different effects on the body. But delta-9 tetrahydrochlorocannabinol, also known as THC, so I'll refer to it as THC, it's easier to say, is amongst the top two components of med medicine um, from the plant. It's also known, there's another one called CBD, cannabidiol, and it's the second most, com most commonly known um, and, and this plant. So what they do is THC is the primary ingredient. Okay. It's like number one, it's the most ingredient that's made up in the plant. According to Procon.org, um, THC can be useful for treating a variety of medical conditions. It's the main ingredient in a pill that is currently used to treat nausea, vomiting, and cancer patients that are receiving chemotherapy and it helps promote eating um it helps patients that are that have hiv aids and they can't get the need to eat so this is a great um enhancer to help them eat um this causes neurons in the brain to activate and it binds to its receptors and it triggers um, an event in the cell and other cells around it intensify that thought. So if they're thinking, oh, I'm hungry, you know, it's going to intensify that need, Think making the body think that they need to eat something, which is good. And, you know, you, we want them to gain weight with HIV and AIDS. They are muscle wasting um, because they are not getting enough nutrients. Um, this causes neurological effects from the rapid release and reuptake of norepinephrine and causing adrenaline spike. So that's great. Again, that, you know, gets them excited for food, gets them going, gets them happy. Um, there is a period of when the adrenaline does wear off and it can cause intense drowsiness. So people who are taking this medication should not um, operate heavy machinery or go driving, um, you know, see how it affects them first and go based on that. Um, I would not have a patient drive themselves in for a checkup if they're taking medicinal marijuana. Um, there's uh, CBD is commonly known. It's a supplement. It doesn't have the psychoactive component as THC. Th THC can kind of trigger the mind to think more intensely. The thoughts become more more real, more, more surreal, more intense than just regular thoughts if you were not taking medical marijuana. So the CBD will not cause that psychoanalysis, 
psychoanalytic um, reaction because it does not have that component. So a lot of people use CBD oils, CBD topical, CBD lotions to help with um, eczema, psoriasis, um, inflammatory issues that causes skin to hive and itch and swell. Um, let's see. It does. It's according to WebMD though. Uh, CBD, the active chemicals in medical marijuana, are too similar to the chemicals bought chemicals that the body makes already. So they ha they are involved in appetite, memory, movement, and pain. So it it helps helps kind of block those. So people who are in pain from treatment, um, the the CBD part helps kind of block those receptors and lessen the side of the side effects of pain and the intense thought of pain. Um, C CBD can also treat Dravet syndrome, which is a severe type of epilepsy, and we see in a lot of children, and they, they're diagnosed really, really early in life, and some of these medications that are chemically made for these conditions is causing more harmful side effects than it would than having medical marijuana for these children, whether it's a topical, a pill, an oil. Medical marijuana, a lot of misconception about that is people have to smoke it, and that is not true. Um, a lot of prescribers that do prescribe medical marijuana uh, would have like a topical that would simply go under the tongue like one to two drops every six to eight hours. Um, so that's a very large misconception. CBD is an antagonist of the G protein coupled receptor. So what that does is that that's what causes the motor processing in the brain. Um, so you would see a lot of people who are on this can't react super quickly or think quickly or, you know, catch themselves before they fall. It's it's a fall risk, yes. Um, I would educate your patients not to drive, operate heavy machine, machinery, and do any of that sorts. Um, but it's also great for Parkinson's, for people who have the uncontrolled tremors and can't talk and they're stu 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 stuttering like that a lot. And it's, it's, it's really an awesome thing that I think we should all – um, come around to have and for these patients and incorporate it in into our our everyday medicines. Here's a quick video that I'm gonna show you, and it's about a man who has Parkinson's and he shakes uncontrollably, and it shows his first dosage of medicinal marijuana, and it shows the effects that he has. And rub it in your cheek. Don't do too much. You're going to be asleep all, all afternoon. Okay. You know what you should do? No. Don't try to communicate. Just relax. See what happens. We know from animal experiments that the endogenous cannabinoid system is very important in regulating motor activity, that very type of activity that is impaired in Parkinson's disease. From animal experiments, we also know that boosting certain branches of the endocannabinoid system is helpful in relieving symptoms of Parkinson's. Finally, from anecdotal information, we know that certain patients who smoke marijuana experience relief of their symptoms. I think you're calmed down. So quickly. Isn't that amazing? He used just a single drop and his hands afterwards were rock steady. And the dyskinesia left. Well, it was so bad. It works most of the time. It's as like it's. Uh... <laughs> Did you guys eat lunch? Are you hungry now? Actually, I've been. First, really like me, could really use marijuana. It makes, makes me pretty angry that. I think right here in my home state. <laughs> the number one frustration that I have is knowing that there is this untapped potential that comes from what marijuana is, te is teaching us. 
to generate new medicines and being stuck because of financial issues or political issues, that is extremely frustrating. We now know that medical marijuana um, controls dyskinesia, um, and yet it's not, it's not available to us. So a lot of patients do experience um, agitation because they cannot um, get their hands on the medical marijuana that is actually helping treat them in their symptoms. And here's a picture of a doctor in Colorado that actually does um, med ma marijuana drops. It's like an oil. And what they do is they put it underneath the tongue or in the buccal pads here because the mouth is so vascular, it, it's absorbed very quickly and it can work in as little as 20 to 25 minutes. It's really a great thing.